If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel. No more messing with this thing. Before we open up the box, let's go over some of the tools real quick. Everything's pretty basic. You got clear tub and tile caulking. That'll help you glue the strip down, seal up the edges, a level, a miter box, a basic hacksaw, one with the thinner teeth is better for metal. We got different size drill bits, a cordless drill, a handheld screwdriver to screw the screws in so we don't crack the tile. We're gonna pre-drill our holes and then hand tighten the screws in there so we can be extra careful. A tape measure, a pen, or a pencil will work. All right, it's pretty basic. So this is a Sterling Deluxe sliding door. You gotta make sure you get the taller one if you don't have a tub. This is the silver finish with the rain glass. It's a frame door. This is the exact part number from Lowe's. This whole kit was $270, everything included doors and frame it's at Lowe's. All right, let's open her up. The packing is very simple in this box. You got your strip of hardware, you got your instructions, and then you got your rails. Before you start anything, you want to make sure the glass isn't damaged. It looks good to go. It's nice, it makes it easy to stay organized without a bunch of stuff. So we're going to start with the bottom rail, so when you get the bottom rail out. All right, so we got our side rails. We got our top piece, which is the hardest to cut. And then we have our bottom piece here. Should be the easier piece to cut. These two will be the last step, so we can get them out of the way now. All right, let's figure out our bottom piece. So before you cut anything, you want to understand how this works. This taller side, this lip here, is going to be your front. So it goes toward the bathroom. So this is your front piece. It's going to lay down with this. This curved piece is going to be on the bottom. So that's why you're going to run your silicone or whatever glue you use to the bottom of this piece, this flat piece here. And then this tall lip here will go inside of your side rail. Your side rail has a little sleeve in there. I don't know if you can see it that little piece right there and that slides and that goes right on top of your bottom piece just like that so it actually sits right on top of it and locks into place so that way once this is mounted to the wall the bottom piece can't move so you don't need super strong glue for the bottom rail because it really can't move just a little just a little water sealant silicone will work So now that we understand how this goes and how it goes in there, now we know that this is our front. And we just gotta measure it out so it fits in there. We want it to fill pretty much the whole area. The instructions say you want a quarter inch less than what you need. That way you have an eighth of an inch on each end. But for the most part, it's you want it to be as close as possible with a tiny little gap about the thickness of the side rail. Forgot to add, you're gonna want some tape to tape down the railing. Before and after gluing it, you're gonna to wanna to use tape to hold it down so it doesn't move anywhere. And we're exactly 58 and a quarter. So that means we can cut this at exactly 58 inches to give an eighth of an inch on each side. So we'll just cut it at exactly 58 inches. I always say the less mess you have inside, the better. 
So I'm gonna cut this out here in the garage. Make sure you're making straight lines everywhere so it's marked properly and then just keep going around sawing it perfectly straight till you get all the way through so before deciding anything you want to know where you want your side rails to be you can move it over to follow a grout line and when i look at my tile up here i don't want it to look like that so i'm probably going to bring it over until it covers that and i'll follow that grout line so I'm going to move this bottom piece forward until I like it. So it actually has a lip on the bottom piece that hugs really nicely to the front of the piece. That way you get more room in the shower. And that way we can run this grout line as straight as possible. So wherever that's going to be level is where I'm going to mount it. So I'm going to run my grout line there. This hugs the front piece perfectly where I don't even have to move it around and play with it, which is awesome. Like when you touch it, it's flush all the way across. It doesn't move on its own. So it grabs in place good. So you just kind of want to make sure that it's in the right spot all the way across. And then we got the same gap on each end. And then we'll tape it down. So that looks good there. So that's just to keep it from going side to side. We'll put our side rails on and level them and drill the holes. So we want to make sure it looks good on the level and it makes good with our grout line. If the shower is not perfectly square, you might have to make slight adjustments, but you want that to be as level as possible because you don't want a crooked door. All right, I'm happy with that. They didn't tile it perfectly, but it does run that grout line very well and it doesn't show my backsplash hanging over the side. I didn't want backsplash hanging over. That's why I came all the way to the front of the shower. And that gives us more room in the shower too. So that's gonna look really nice. And what's nice is they already pre-drilled the holes where they recommend you mounting it. And then, and then the top piece will hold it all together. So let's drill those holes through the tile now. All right, so I taped everything down. It makes sense. I was able to run that grout line perfectly all the way down. And then that way my backsplash doesn't hang over at all. And that little piece of tile is on the outside of my tub. That's why I went inside of that tile. So that grout line runs perfectly with the bottom of my shower all the way up. And there's a little lip on the front of the bottom piece that hugs really tight to the front of this. So that's going to be perfect where that goes. So everything's in perfect placement right now. So nothing's glued down and nothing's screwed in. So you want to look at it here and make sure everything makes sense before you start permanently attaching it. But I'm very happy with everything's laid out. So now it's time to start gluing down and drilling our holes. So I drilled and marked my holes on the wall. I marked little spots on the edge of this rail so when I can glue it down I know where to put it. 
So now I can take the tape off and start permanently attaching it. You're gonna want a good masonry bit to go through the tile. So the kit came with these crazy looking anchors. It was not easy to get that anchor in through the tile. You gotta drill a pretty big hole. I'd use a pretty big masonry drill bit. I went through like three different drill bits till I got through the hole. It's a lot of work getting through tile. One piece on until I was done with my side rail. I got all my anchors in place, all three of them. So I wanted to make sure all my screws were in the right place on that piece before removing the bottom. So I'm just making sure all my anchors get installed correctly. And once I'm done with checking both sides, I'm gonna remove the bottom piece and glue the bottom piece down. Once that bottom piece is glued down, then you can come back and secure your side rails. And then it's as easy as putting the top on and installing your doors. All right, now we want this lip to be as clean and dry as possible. So I wiped it down a couple times. I wiped down my bottom rail. Everything is super dry. I have my three little dots marked on there so I can line it up. Now I'm gonna add my silicone. There's a groove in here that you just fill with the caulking. You just, you just fill this whole thing with your silicone. Now I put it on real thick. So that's in there real thick, so that'll seal that when we press it in. Now I'll just put a thin bead across this one. You fill that one completely, and then put a thin bead on the other side. Now let's see if we can line her up. You just want to go through and press it down pretty good so you feel like it's touching everywhere it's supposed to be. And then we'll get our tape. Now that I got that setting, I'm gonna go back to Lowe's and look for a drill bit that's designed for tile because these masonry bits, they're struggling to get through this tile because getting these three anchors and getting those three anchors into the tile with the masonry bit took me like an hour just to do those three holes. I'm burning up all my bits, so I'm gonna go get something better suited for the tile so I can do this side. While this is drying, that'll give me enough time to go to Lowe's and get another drill bit all right guys, we've got some new tools. This one's specialized to cut tile. And this one's a four-sided bit for concrete. So it's supposed to last twice as long. For a 5 16th hole, that's what my anchors recommend. So this one worked great at getting the hole started and preventing the tile from chipping. And then this one, with the four-sided masonry bit, I would I would put good pressure on it. And as I always had good pressure on it, I would tap the back of the hammer so it would get through the tile a little faster. And as you can see, it didn't chip much at all. And then once you get your anchors in there, it looks good. All right, I'm just gonna hand tighten all the screws into the anchors. You don't want to use power tools. You don't want to put them in too tight and crack your tile or have more serious problems. That way you can monitor the tightness. You don't want to over tighten anything.
All right, they're on there nice and securely. We can remove the tape now. And then we just gotta measure our top piece to get it to fit on there perfectly and then we're ready for doors. The middle screw gets a bumper. And this is what your door hits on both sides so it doesn't hit the metal. That goes in your middle screw. We got our bumpers in place. Now we're ready for the top piece. Took exactly 58 and 1 eighth. All right, now this is gonna be the fun one to cut. It might be a little difficult with a miter saw. So I actually found it a lot quicker to cut it with my cobalt Dremel. It cut it off really clean. I was able to smooth it off with the Dremel. This just cut a lot faster than doing it by hand and it, it cut actually really straight. Well, there's our frame, our top piece. It actually just sits on there. So what I did is I cut it to the exact measurement that I had here and just a little bit of the blade cutting it gave it enough clearance to fit perfectly. And it, as you can see, it's super tight on both sides. It only has a tiny bit of movement. And once you caulk it all in on both sides and silicone everything, it's not gonna move side to side anymore. And then the weight of the doors on here will hold it down. So this is never gonna move. All right, I just spent a couple minutes putting all the rest of the hardware on. Basically just putting your handles on, however your door is set up. This one is just one screw in the back of it. It goes on really simple. So this is the outside because it has the handle and the, uh, the wheels go toward you. So when it goes in, it hangs toward you when you're hanging it on the outside, I mean. So the wheels face the outside of the shower and on the inside panel, it's the opposite. The wheels face to the back of the shower. So you have to be in the shower, swing it inward, hook it into the back. Cause you can see there's two grooves here. So since there's two grooves here, this one, the inside panel comes in, hooks in and it'll sit in that back groove while the other one, the outside, the outside panel will come in from the outside, hook into the front groove. And then you put your trim piece on, on the back side to lock it in so it can't come out. So that's your last step is the, the last trim piece, which is right here. So this is the last trim piece and the inside panel has two little screws on the inside of it that these little groove it'll hook into that and it'll lock it in you just tighten it and you're done. So as you can see there's two little tiny screws at the bottom of this one. So it's going to be free hanging up here and then it's going to have a piece on the inside to keep it from swinging. I mean, nobody wants a swinging door. I put the wheels in the dead center, so I'll see if I need any adjustments after that. Normally these things, are, they're made pretty well to go in here and not have to move them around. So we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna put the camera down. So you gotta make sure before you let go that it's locked in and it's not gonna fall. Put it on one side so that way it can't flap and fall out of here. So what we want to do is slide them back and forth a few times and make sure that you're square at the top and bottom. That way you know everything's lined up right. You just keep adjusting those little wheels until the door's square. You might have to take the door off a few times to get it perfect. And there's a little plastic 
insert at the bottom of this. You want to make sure that it sits on this lip and it's not bent in there because if it gets caught on either side of it, it won't slide smooth. So you want to make sure you want to get down there and make sure it's on there. The door should slide pretty easily and nice and free. You don't have, shouldn't have to drag it. And now for the inside piece, you get these little seal thing, these little bushings. These are called your rear seal bushings or something. So you want to put one on one end and then slide your seal into here. You just got to keep pushing it in until it goes all the way to the end. And then you want to cut the excess off and put your extra on there. And then it says to crimp the end, I guess, so it doesn't fall off. So I took a pair of pliers and bent the end a little bit right there. Just so this piece is now on there tight and it can't move and it can't fall off. Same thing with the other end. I bent it a little bit with a pair of pliers. So now this is on there tight. This little feather thing can't come off. And now you install it just like that on the inside with the feather end toward the door. It goes on like that and then you just tighten it. On this piece it hooks into the bottom. So you get it to hook to the bottom and then you tighten that screw so it actually lips to the bottom piece here. That's pretty cool. So this, this little piece that you put on, it hooks inside this groove here. So make sure it hooks on the bottom and then tighten that screw so they stay together. That way it'll slide freely. You don't want to rub too much. If it rubs too much, then it's gonna be hard to open. So you want it as low as possible to where it's not loose. All right, guys, looks like we're all done. Nothing swings, it's all tight. Inside door is smooth. And once you're in the shower, you close this one. That way when the water comes out of the shower, it hits this door and it doesn't go behind this gap. And then when you get out, you close it like that. Looks really nice. All right guys, I just finished siliconing everything. I went around and caulked it all. So it's got a nice seal all the way around the entire frame, inside and out. I even did the cracks inside, that way water doesn't get in between the frames. You just want to always make sure you got a nice seal all the way around this frame so that way you don't get mold and water trapped underneath the bottom track. So I went around and caulked the inside of that as well. And I sealed anywhere that there's gaps between the frames. I used the clear caulking so it goes on white and it should go clear to where it kind of blends in with the silver trim. I think it turned out awesome. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel.